Welcome to WeakNet Academy. I am your host and instructor, Douglas Bordeaux. In this video demonstration, we're going to be taking a look at how to attack a poor implementation of JWT. In this demonstration, I'm not going to be using any special tools. You can use any operating system or any browser. I'm just going to be using a few online resources, and I'll place the links for those within the description of this video. Before we begin, if you're unfamiliar with JSON, I highly recommend pausing the video and browsing out to JSON.org and learning more about the JavaScript object notation syntax itself. I'm going to cover it briefly here, but it's best to get the absolute most fundamental understanding of how something works before you actually attack it. So let's start with JSON. What is JSON? Well, JSON is simply a standardized syntax for serializing things like objects, arrays, strings, and numbers and things in the form of a whole group. This group is surrounded by curly braces and its comma delimited key value or attribute value pairs. It's most commonly used by web APIs, front-end web code, client-to-server architecture, and much more. So let's take a look at a simple example of a JSON object. In this example, I'm going to be using Atom. The Atom IDE is from GitHub, and you can actually install it on any operating system. Again, I won't be using any specialized tools here. I'm not forcing anyone to use Linux for this demonstration. So let's start by creating our JSON object, and I'm going to create the simplest example I could come up with, which is a single key value pair. Again, as I said before, the JSON object is surrounded by curly braces. And then we're going to have key, and then we're going to have value. And that is it. I use the Atom ID editor because I know that it has built-in functionality for syntax highlighting many programming languages and syntax. As we can see, this highlighted our JSON object quite nicely. Now, we can see that the object is two strings surrounded by the curly braces and delimited by a colon. Now if we want to add more key value pairs to our JSON object, we simply delimit those with a comma. Here we have a simple example where we have two different data types. We have a string, key one, and we have a value, which is just an integer, number one. This is complete valid JSON, and I'll show you how to validate your JSON using another online resource, JSON Lint. So let's add one more piece, and this is a little bit important to what we're going to be doing. I'm going to do comma, and we're going to do JSON, and we're going to actually nest another JSON object within our JSON object. And here, nested JSON one. and we'll do the value of 9001 just so it's over 9000. I'm going to hit control S and you can see that the syntax highlighting looks great, but how do we validate that this is valid JSON? I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to browse out to this website, jsonlint.com. And then all I'm going to do is paste in our JSON I just created and hit validate JSON. And we'll see that it is in fact verified as valid JSON by JSON Lint. So now that we got that out of the way, let's now dive in and take a look at JWT, or JavaScript Object Notation Web Tokens. So what is JWT? JWT is JavaScript Object Notation Web Tokens. And what this really means is that we're encapsulating the transmission of the JSON object between the client and the server in a protected way that is actually signed. And there's an RFC 7519 that I'm going to bring up in a minute, which defines this as a compact, self-contained way for securely transmitting JSON objects, just as I previously mentioned. So the data is trusted by both parties and verified, as the tokens are actually signed with a symmetric key using the HMAC algorithm, or an asymmetric hashing algorithm like RSA, in which we have a public key that's known by both parties, and then a private key which is known only by the server. The client can then sign the key itself, to ensure that it's not tampered with by attackers or and that it is in fact coming from the person that's coming from using the public key and then the server itself will decrypt that JWT using the private key. So again, JWTs are signed tokens 
And when we say verify it, that's exactly what we mean. We're just going to check the integrity to ensure that the token has not been tampered with by an attacker or somebody, some sort of man the middle attack. And the request E is also just simply ensuring that the claims made within the actual JWT are from who they say they are from. So what is a claim? Well, the claim is simply the key value pairs. Like this would be a claim, key, key, key one would be a claim, and JSON would be a claim. And within the standard itself, which let me pull that up right here, we have this hand here, RFC 7519, the JWT claims are actually drawn out rather nicely in section four here, which basically states that the key value pairs are claims. Now, if we scroll down to section 4.1, we see a section for registered claims. Now, these claims are clearly defined by the standard here. There's a few here that we're going to see. ISS, specifically, is the issuer claim. EXP, which is the expiration time. And IAT, which is issued at. Now, the expiration time means that the token does, in fact, inspire. We're basically going to tamper and hack this token within a very small amount of time. And the issued at time right here is going to be another timestamp, which means that that is when the token was actually issued to me. And finally, we have the issuer, which is going to be a URI, which I will show you. Okay, now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's just dive right in and try to attack the JWT implementation. And to do so, I'm going to be using this demo here at georgelangkemper.nl forward slash JWT demo forward slash hs256.php. Now that's important. There is another, there is another uh, demo, that's, which is rs256.php, but that's a little more of an advanced attack, which we'll look at in a later lesson. So now that we're here, I'm going to refresh this page here to grab a new JWT because I know that this one has in fact expired within the amount of time that I used to simply describe all of this. And I'm going to just go directly into a text editor. I have one here, G edit, and I'm going to hit control V. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this part right here, the JWT colon space, because that's not actually part of the JSON web token. So what is this? What am I looking at? This just, to me, looks like a lot of text right here. And it looks like it's in some other language or it's just random, right? Well, there is a little bit of a pattern here. We see that there's a bunch of random text and then a period, which kind of sticks out because it's not really part of the random text here. And then we have a lot of random text again, followed by another period. And then we have a lot of random text yet again. Now, this it makes sense because this is the actual structure of the JWT. The JWT consists of a header delimited by a period, and then the payload of the actual JSON object that we want to send to the request E. And finally, we have another period to delimit the signature. The signature is simply the outcome of the hashing algorithm of the entire body of the JWT. So let's go ahead and just pull these values out. This is the header here. And next we have the payload. If I could spell this correctly. I'm gonna pull the payload again and we're just gonna go all the way down to the period. I'm gonna do control X to get rid of it. I'm gonna paste it in here. And then finally what we're left with is X, the signature. So how do we attack this if we can't even read this? You know, like again, what language is this? Well, it's actually just simple English, plain English, and ASCII and plain text, but it's encoded. Encoded is not a one-way street, kind of like encryption. It is actually a way to translate the data so that it can be safely transmitted. So what I'm going to do is go to this online resource right here. I'm going to click decode. And once this is done loading, I'm going to paste the header. So I'm going to copy the header and I'm going to paste it right here into this form. And it's going to decode the base64 into plain text. And you'll see that the output is just simply a JSON object. Exactly what we just looked at before in the previous example. Header decoded. Let's do this again with the payload, just to see what the payload is. Oops, let me get rid of this part right here. 
somehow I accidentally got the header value within the payload. All right, great, so I'm gonna copy this. And now we're going to decode the payload itself. And we can see the payload itself is yet another JSON object. And guess what? Let's do this payload decoded. It actually implements what we just looked at, nested JSON. The data attribute right here, or key right here, has a value which is JSON itself. And within that JSON, we have another key value pair, which is nice, right? Now that we understand it. Also, what we can see are the registered claims that we just went over. The issuer right here, which again is just the URI or URL, issued at, which is a timestamp, that's when this token was issued to me, and the expiration, which is another timestamp. And then finally, we have the data. The data is what we're actually going to tamper with. And we're also going to tamper with the header. If you take a look at the header, we see that we have a type, which is JWT, which is in every JSON web token header that I've ever seen. And then we have the algorithm. Now, all of these, if you've noticed, these keys right here are only three bytes in length. And that pertains to the fact that the RFC 7519, which we said defines a compact, self-contained way for securely transmitting JSON objects, is that this is actually compact. Three bytes is sufficient enough to describe exactly, using small self-explanatory little keys right here to explain exactly what this is. Each one of these is only three. And I think they chose that because JWT is three bytes. And plus, again, if you went two bytes, you may not understand it. It would just basically look like some sort of acronym. Whereas this, you can really look at this and just figure out that this is type, this is algorithm, this is issue. So now that we got that explanation out of the way, let's try to change the algorithm to none. Now, when I do so, I'm actually going to copy this. And I'm going to re-encode this. I'm going to go back to this website here. I'm going to click on the encode. I'm going to paste this JavaScript object notation in here. I'm going to hit the encode button. And what gets spat out is something that I would just like to keep on hand. Now, the header will never change the entire time we're attacking this. We're actually only going to attack this once. But if you're going to really try to fuzz an application, it's best to just kind of keep this on hand right here. So I'm going to paste this here, and then I'm going to put a period, because I know that the period is going to be required. Next, what we're going to do is tamper with this data right here. I'm going to make this be weaknet, and I'm going to make this be academy. Now, because this has definitely expired within the time I've used to explain how all of this works, I can't actually copy this and encode it. What I'm going to do is now that I've shown you how I'm performing the attack, or the attempt to attack, I'm going to go back to this site here. I'm going to click on Decode. So I have the decoder up and ready, so I can do this as quickly as possible before the J JSON Web Token actually expires. I'm going to request a new JSON Web Token. And then I'm going to copy this. Just the payload value. I'm going to paste the payload value back into here. I'm going to hit Decode. I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to copy in my new uh, already encoded header that I have on hand, which was altered. Add the period. And then here in this decoded, we're going to put weak net. And then for the key. And then for value, again, this is the decoded data. We're going to do academy. I'm going to copy all of this again. And I'm going to click on encode. I'm going to paste this into the form, and I'm going to encode this with our new values. I'm going to copy this as the actual payload itself. And because they changed the algorithm to none, I'm not going to put a signature. But here's the trick. You actually have to put the period because, again, this is a standard. You want to adhere to the standard. So even if there's no value there, it still needs to know when this payload ends. I'm going to send the JWT, and look at that. This is valid JWT. I was able to attack this by simply stripping off the actual signature itself and tampering with the data. Now, how does this work in like a real world example? Well, for instance, let's say that this was role and this was user. And we were in an actual web application in which I was under the role of an actual user. And I only had the functionality provided to me by this role. 
let's say that I wanted to be an admin and I wanted to create new admin accounts or do administrative things maliciously or during a penetration test. Now here's where the fun part begins. Now what I would do is rather than use user, I would start to fuzz different types of roles until I got a valid JSON token sent back to me. And I would just change this to admin. And in the example of this right here, in which this actually worked, this is a poor implementation of the JWT, or it actually just demonstrates the poor implementation. Again, this is just a demo. We're not actually hacking this site. We would, in fact, get that functionality as an admin for the penetration test, and we could throw that in, into our report. So I hope that this covered JSON web tokens and how to perform like a, a very rudimentary, you know, low-level intro attack, like simple fuzzing attack, on the JWT implementation for HS-256. HS-256 stands for the HMAC, by the way. The RS-256 is for the RSA, in which I described before using a public and private key. This was a symmetric key. So I was able to, rather than try to guess the symmetric key, all I had to do was strip away the algorithm itself by changing it to none, and then tamper with the data, re-encode it, and send it back in the same exact format by delimiting the values, the header, payload, and non-existed signature with periods. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. You can tweet me at weeknetlabs, or you can send me an email, weeknetlabs at gmail.com, and I'll try to get back as quickly as possible. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you learned a lot from this. If you have, please consider hitting the like button, or if you'd like to see more videos in the future, hit subscribe, and that would really help me out. Thank you so much. I have, hope you have a great day.